Hello, Internet! So nice to see you! A problem that many musicians and songwriters have is how to compose in a specific style. Now, this is a known problem for many songwriters because what they are thinking is simply that they're gonna write their own music and then it doesn't really matter what kind of style this music is in, it's their music and that's it. And I do respect that. But there are some situations where you do want to learn how to write a jazz song or a rock song or a blues or any other kind of style. So how do we do that? How do we absorb the element of a style well enough so that we can write in that style? In this video, we're gonna see how to get immersed into the aesthetic of a specific style, how to learn the convention of the style so that you can use them in your own music, and how to learn the theory of a style and how the theory applies in that style in a way that helps you composing in that style. Now, in a moment, we'll switch to a video where a student asks me how to compose in the neoclassical metal style. If this is not your style, that's cool. The answer I give applies to many different styles, but it's helpful to have a specific example to work through so that you can see how to do the exact same thing in any other style. In this video, I am first explaining what to do to get into a specific style as a composer, and then I am taking a specific piece of music and I am dissecting it to show how theory applies to it. In essence, I want to be able to write neoclassical music. Mm -hmm. And I feel as though I know, well, at least some of the theory mm -hmm. behind the, the chords and the harmony mm -hmm. behind it in terms of harmonic minor, minor, melodic mm -hmm. minor, Neapolitan chord and all the chromatic chords like mm -hmm. secondary mm -hmm. dominance and stuff. But I don't know how to put it together into writing a neoclassical song. You know the theory. You have the element, but going from there to writing a song, you don't know how to do it. Yeah, in other styles it seems to be okay. Mm -hmm. Other styles like? Just uh, like my music that you know, I play in general. Maybe Jeez. instrumental rock or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You do listen to a lot of instrumental rock. Yes. Do you listen to a lot of classical music? Not neoclassical, classical? Uh, not a lot, mm -hmm. but enough, I guess. What do you listen to? Who do you listen to? Um, I, I like Mozart a lot, mm -hmm. and uh, 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 Johann Strauss, mm -hmm. um, and Chopin. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I like Bach and, and so on, but mm -hmm. I haven't listened to it as much as mm -hmm. I probably should have, or Paganini. Mm -hmm. I, 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 li I like this. I like Bach, but easy there, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me to listen to Bach. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Have you studied any of their pieces on guitar? No. That's what you have to do. When you say study, what do you mean? Like transcribe? I mean, or? yeah, transcribe. I mean, uh, of course, it's pretty sad. Chopin is pretty hard to transcribe for guitar. Because, I mean, all the chords, etc., all the extra voices. You can still transcribe the melody. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, t or you can arrange it maybe for solo guitar and bass. You're still missing all the uh, lines in between, maybe. But you have the melody and the bass line. It's something. At least it gives you an idea. Okay? The goal here is not so much to play the piece. The goal here is to understand how the piece is made. And just by looking at the score or listening, you don't get how the piece is made. But if you learn it, I mean, again, you don't have to take it to perfection. You don't have to um, make sure that all, all the techniques are perfect and you can play it up to speed and then you can go on a stage and play it. And uh, You don't have to do all, the, all that work unless you want to. Mm -hmm. But just playing it through tells you a lot. There are a lot of small things and correspondences that you don't notice if you just look at the score or you listen to it. That said, Chopin may not be the best place to start. Okay? I mean, on the complexity <laughs> level, we are mm -hmm. up there. Okay? Same for Liszt, same, same for most of the late romantics. Let's not go there. Okay? Um, Bach wrote a series of uh, cello suits. Okay? Practically everything you can play on a cello, you can play on a guitar. 
because right. the extension is give or take very similar. We have more higher nodes, they have more lower nodes, but not much. And in case you can always transpose the whole thing up mm -hmm. an octave, okay? Okay. And since cello is a larger instrument, which a bit more, is a bit more cumbersome than guitar, it means that they go generally slower than what a guitar player can do. Right. I mean, there are virtuoso cello players that, that will smoke you and I <laughs> with no, like, no problem. No but in general, most cello pieces tend to be okay for guitar, as opposed to the violin pieces, which are, which are mental in general. Okay? Unless you have a very good technique, it's very hard to play a violin piece. Because okay. they, their level of technique and speed is much higher, being the instrument smaller. Mm -hmm. Okay, so cello pieces are great to get started. And just reading the notes, find how to play them on the guitar. You're gonna see that there are scales and there are pages and what scales and what are pages, and then you're gonna see that the same theme is repeated but sequenced higher, lower, and all these kind of things. Okay. Okay. Or you can take a Paganini piece, but again technique level, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe don't start from Paganini, okay, example. Bach first, cello suite, start with a prelude, which is like, everybody knows that, like. Right? Mm -hmm. You guys know this one. It's, it's an octave lower in the original. Yeah. Okay. So, so when I hear this, I hear some complex harmony going on. Okay, it's a one for five. Okay, one for five. <laughs> I'll show you. <laughs> it's actually, I want to. Uh, it's easy because it is. Again, you want to see the score, and since you are learning, you didn't know what notes they are in what order they are. Mm -hmm. When you are hearing this, like you hear some complex harmony, but it's super simple. This is a G major chord, right? Okay. He arpeggiates it. There's an A note here, but this A is just an embellishment on this beat, right? Mm -hmm. The second arpeggio is G, mm -hmm. E, C. It's C a C major. chord, yeah, again, it, there is the bass, it stays G, so it's a C major, and the C is, embe is embellished with a, with a B, right? Mm -hmm. Next. What the heck is that? This is G, F sharp, and C. The G is just a leftover from the, from the previous chords, a pedal note, we call them, okay? Mm -hmm. The F sharp and C are the third and seventh of a D7 chord. Right. Okay, we get these is essentially a D7 chord. Mm -hmm. And then you have G, G, B, which is another G major chord. So the harmony is that's pretty crazy. I mean, you can know all the theory you want, but until you see this stuff applied, like from a one for five, they can take magic. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. it's, it, magic. It's, I mean, if I told you before, what is this? Oh, it's pretty complex. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, again, G, C, D, G. Like any country song ever written. <laughs> okay, <laughs> three chords and the truth, as they say. You want to listen not only to your influences, to people you like, like Malmsteen, but also to their influences. Malmsteen is clearly influenced by Paganini and Bach, mm -hmm. and Vivaldi, and a number of other ones, but especially Paganini, I say. Okay, so you want to listen to Paganini, but you also want to learn Paganini. Malmsteen has said more than once in, in, in interviews that he never practiced exercises, because why practice any exercise when you have a piece of music that can work as an exercise and is a piece of music? Mm -hmm. So you rather study a piece of Paganini or anybody else, essentially, because they are a technical exercise and they also develop your harmonic and melodic sensibility. Right. Okay, it's, it's a kind of all-around uh, um, training, if you want. Okay, make sense? Totally makes sense. Good, happy learning. Thank you very much. Tomasa. Thank you. So you see, there are three main practices you want to implement to learn a specific style of music. The first one is that you have to listen to music of that style. It's kind of obvious, but many composers don't do that. The second practice is that you have to learn pieces of that style. That means that you actually have to be able to play a few of those 
pieces, even if you not play them well, because just by learning them on your instrument, you will notice much more what makes those pieces tick, what makes them work the way they are working. The third practice is to see how theory applies to that style. Theory is universal, it applies to all styles, but the way it applies to different styles is slightly different. Of course, it helps a lot if you know your theory really well. And for compositional purposes, I totally recommend you guys check out my course Complete Chord Mastery, which is not a book, it's a complete video course that explains exactly how chord and harmony works on the guitar, not just in theory, on how to apply all these to your instrument, and how all this theory applies to many different styles. It's very useful for a musician to have a strong background in harmony and chords, regardless of the style you play, and in fact, the better you know your harmony, the faster you can learn to compose music in any style you want. If you like this video, smash on that like button and don't forget to subscribe, and if you have any question, any comment, any feedback, please write them down in the comment, I always read my comment. This is Tommaso Zilli of MusicDeadyForGuitar.com, and until next time. Enjoy.